Welcome to the Krista Escamilla Show. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here for the Krista Escamilla Show. As always, I'm grateful for your time and glad you're here to do three of my favorite things. That's listen, learn, and grow. So thanks for being here. We are so excited to introduce today's guest. But first, that's called a tease in our business. Uh, but first, we have to thank our sponsors. A big shout out to Kevin Foreman of Foreman Financial, for Tapestry Hotel Midland, for Rig ID Workwear, Midland Cap Company, ThinFR, JoinCapClub.com, and the new Omni Midland Hotel. We thank you so much for your support. Uh, we love local businesses, so we ask you to support local however you can. Speaking of local businesses that we love, if you listen to the Krista Escamilla show a lot, uh, which thank you if you do, and thanks for those reviews, by the way, a little plug there. Uh, so we appreciate you leaving those. We talk about the fuel bar all the time. It is one of the probably uh, most favorite restaurants that gets shouted out on our podcast. And we have the owner today sitting with us, Alexis Rice. She is the owner of Fuel Bar. Thanks for being with us, Alexis. Thank you for having me. You also have some other titles. Uh, first of all, you're a phenomenal athlete. I uh, can't wait to dive into that. Um, and you share a broadcast background with me as well. Uh, and you are the business development uh, director for Tenaris. So Correct, yeah. That is incredible. Lots of hats that you I do. wear. <laughs> but. Um, no, I, I enjoy them all, and I think that um, when I first got out of the oil field before I started Fuel Bar, I went back to that boss two years in, and I said, David, if I'm ever an employee again, I will be a much better one now that I've been a boss. Oh, isn't that the truth? Oh, my gosh. And, oh, and I can't wait to dive into that. <laughs> Let, that, because that is so true. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, how did you get to West Texas and then eventually to own your own business? Let's talk yeah, all the things, all Alexis. The things. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Lubbock, uh -huh. um, graduated from Friendship uh, in 08, and then I went down to Snyder, Texas, oh. um, to Western Texas College, and my freshman year, I actually played, uh, I went down there to play volleyball. Um, once season was over, I contacted the basketball coach, and I was like, hey, I played in high school. I didn't play my senior year, but you know, all South Plains, like I was decent. Uh -huh. um, do you have a spot on your team? And she said, hey, actually, <gasps> I'd love that. We, we have practice tomorrow. Um, we're leaving for Arizona for a tournament in a couple days. So come practice. Let's see how it goes. So then I was on the basketball team for the rest of the year. Which I think is a great point to bring up. If you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Because I mean, because I could have gone to my my JUCO I went to and said, hey, can I play basketball? But I did not have the talent to back it up. You had the talent to back it up, and you did it. And they let they got you on the team. They got me on the team. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And then the this is just funny, and I can't say I contributed a lot. But once I was done with basketball, we had some... Um, a lot of foreigners when you're in junior college, right? Right, right. Um, and we had had a few on the softball team that had got deported for MIPs. Okay. And they needed a pinch runner. So you went and played so softball? So I went and played softball too. I played this is like great. three games and um, I ended up scoring a run, you know, I dove into Knuckles home. on that. Yeah. This is so, so impressive. Yeah. Wow. Just had a great time. Um, didn't even play golf in college because I know you're a golfer. Yeah. I thought I, see, this whole time I thought you were a golfer and had no idea all these other sports you could so play. So weird, especially knowing your family and, and how much y'all love golf and are involved. When I graduated and going through high school, golf wasn't cool. Very true. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. So up until like Spieth and Fowler and JT came through, like they're a few years younger than me. So it hadn't yeah. made it the explosion that it's made now, that right? That makes sense, right. And my mom was actually my golf coach in high school. Um, so I was forced to play at that point in my life. Um, but after JUCO, I ended up just going to Tech to finish out and uh, did two and a half years there and graduated with a broadcast journalism degree. I love that, and I love that. sports reporting is really kind of where I thought my life was gonna be headed. Right. Um, fully aware of the salary that right. you might start out with. 
nothing which is nothing <laughs> less <laughs> just, than teachers <laughs> yes. like, when when people come and ask me to speak about broadcasting i'm like just be be aware you're not going to make much money no. and, and just so just so you know because since broadcasting was what i did my first job out of college I made $15,000 a year with a college degree. You know, you can barely buy dinner for, oh, a, you yeah. know, for, yeah. for a whole two weeks sure. off of 15000 let alone pay your rent, pay, buy your, you know, pay your car. Yeah. I mean, how do you pay bills and live off $15,000 a year? A year. That's, anyway, I no, just wanted to put that in perspective it, for those of it's you. It's actually you have to love it uh, Until you, you get into a larger market. Yes. Sure, you can become more successful, but that takes a lot of years. Right. I mean, it's essentially going from JUCO basketball to the Olympics, right? Right. Like, right. you really have to be really good at your job and get the perfect breaks and, and just have all of this training and whatnot to become the best and make the money. Right. You would have been great in it, though, I have to <laughs> say, because you. you're a natural here today. So you would have been great. So what made you decide so, not to? Was it the salary? That no. was it? <laughs> so I graduated December of 12 from tech, and I took a job as a producer for a sports talk show. And the hours were 4 to 10 a.m. And um, my so once I graduated high school, my parents had moved down to Midland. So all through college, okay. Midland was home. And... Um, that job that I had taken was $8 an hour. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, Alexis, if this is what you want to do, I will help you to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. You might have to get a second job, um, but you also could come to Midland and see what works for you. Right. So um, I turned to my two weeks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good suggestion, Dad. I just want to say, sometimes we really should listen to our fathers, <laughs> which is all the time. Uh, but no, that was I a hate great... how much he's been right in my life. Don't you? Honest. Looking back, right? God bless. I know. I know. Um, so that's I, great. I came down here, and uh, I worked for one of his dear friends, um, eight to noon. Okay. Were my hours. And then at the time, I was still young enough to be on his country club membership, so I'd play golf most afternoons. Well, that sounds like a good gig you had going there. It was great. And then it was like, <laughs> all right, let's grow up. Um, so, I, so that's when your love for golf really kind of fostered truly, more. Truly, yeah. truly. Um, it became not playing competitively really changed a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? And um, when I was younger, like, one, it wasn't – cool like I had mentioned but I had a terrible temper with it mm. because I was I wasn't bad but it was like my I practiced the least on it also right right but it was one of my worst sports like I I was a good athlete and everything else that I did but I wasn't the best on the golf team and that drove me crazy so right? as I say I found it frustrating yes. right yes um the competitor in you was yes. like I don't understand yeah <laughs> and the older I got I realized if this was what you were supposed to be good at and this is how you paid your bills, get mad. Yeah. But let's enjoy it yeah. because being out here, I don't care if it's 105 degrees, there's nothing better than being on the golf course. That's right. I always say, about, you know, there's nothing better than a day on the golf course. It's always better than a day at work unless it, you love what you do, which you, hopefully you do love what I you do. you can still but love what I think you, you can, still better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's something about being on that golf course. Yes. It is. It's yes. so much fun. Well, I love that. I love that you kind of transferred that that love and came back to it, you yes. know, because, um, because I think it's a, it's a good lesson. Sometimes, you know, sometimes if, if there's something you picked up when you were young, you put it down, you might pick it up again later sure. on and love it. So, and who knew that being in the oil field and in a male dominated world, that being a decent golfer was going to be such an avenue, um, for networking and different things. Yeah. Um, and that's really, even how I started to enjoy it more because it, it, it related to work. Right, right. Um, and you could do both. You could actually merge the two. Yeah. So you got into oil field mm -hmm. and then out of college. And then at some point you said, hey, I'm going to open my own business. <laughs> how did you come up with Fuel Bar? <laughs> so oddly enough, um, I have always had a dream, um, a goal to own like a bagel coffee shop, 100% mm -hmm. ran by special needs. Oh, I love that. Um, my elementary school had um, a lot of deaf kids, mm -hmm. and I learned to sign enough to help the one in my grade in particular because there wasn't enough interpreters to help manage all of them. Mm -hmm. And so from a young age, I have had just, that's a special place in my heart. And That's beautiful. That really is, yeah. 
I thought I was I was going to this gym at the time and they wanted um, like a little smoothie bar and I thought okay I don't know anything about running a business Mm -hmm. my job is flexible enough that I could maybe dabble to see what this looks like Um, so I opened up fuel bar um, inside of a gym had five smoothies and it was um, just open during class hours Mm -hmm. and there's some type of loophole within like the health department system that if you only um, can sell to members, then you don't have to go through a lot of the other things. Okay. Uh, you right. Know, certificates and whatnot. Okay. So that was my plan. Okay. Um, and did I you, did. That. Did you come up with the the mix that yourself? Yes, were you always yeah. Were you always interested in nutrition as an athlete, or was no. it something? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's good to know. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad because sometimes, sometimes I know a lot of athletes that could care less about it. So, no. so it will come at some point. Yes, like, that you <laughs> y'all's family might be one of Fuel Bar's best, but like I'm Chick Fil A's best customer. Oh no, mine love Chick Fil A just as much. You could look at my credit card that's statement. Awful. It's like split between Chick Fil A and Fuel. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> so I came up with these recipes after I honestly was on Pinterest, um, looking at different stuff. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean somebody else doesn't because my right. palate is not very broad. Um, so just had five simple smoothies. And um, it just so happened that I'm sure y'all remember um, Living 360. Yes, yes. So the, the, building that they were in is owned by Duke Edwards uh-huh. and Duke was finishing up a yoga class at that gym and walked out and he goes, Hey, living 360 is looking to get out of their lease. You should consider expanding. And at first I laughed because <laughs> I was like, that is so funny. You're like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Hold on, hold on. Right. I have one blender and five, <laughs> five smoothies on my menu. I make like $40 a day doing this, right. but it's more for the learning experience going right. forward. Um, but I just, I laughed at first Uh and then I thought, can I do this? Mm. Um, so in the process of it, I hired a manager, um, who was their previous manager. So she helped me get a lot of the things together. So uh, complete transparency, fuel bar is really just, I'm gonna call it a better version of Living 360, right, right. Um, and and I loved Living 360 yeah. too. I mean, it was. I mean, it to me, it was. It was very similar, right? Yes. I mean, we loved it. Um, we're sa- we we're sad when we heard it was closing, sure. but then when you took it over, yeah. or, and then did you change the name right away, or how did so, that work? That was an interesting transition, if you will, um, because I knew so little about really what I was jumping into. Um, I had tried to ask like, Hey, can you all stay open a little bit longer, maybe transition employees? And it was, it was a hard pass on their part. Um, so really all I did was I bought their equipment that was inside the building. Um, I had that manager. We took their most popular items Mm -hmm. and renamed them and and changed them just a little bit to put on ours. And then we, we added to it. Gotcha. Um, and so in 60 days from the time they shut down, we opened. Wow. That's quick. It was quick. And you'd never owned a business before. No. Did you have any mentors? Did you have anybody giving you advice? Anyone helping you along that way? Because it is hard to do what you just did. No, I, uh, I'm a doer. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Um, I will look at something and I'll say, okay, well they have this, this, and this, and I know I need to get that. Um, it, no, I, and wow. I'm looking back on it, I'm not sure if that was f- for the better or not, because being self-taught and learning the efficiencies yourself, because I feel like if somebody said, hey, this is how I did it, I might not have really been creative enough or thought through their process That's to true. say I could yeah. do this better. Right. But, you know, trial and error on my own part made a huge difference. Well, and I think everybody business is different anyway, sure. right? So this was your way of just going, okay, well, I'm yeah. jumping in and yeah. what, what, what I'm going to learn for, as I do it. Uh-huh. What was the biggest lesson you learned through that? There's a few. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do we have? Take notes if you're opening a new business. <laughs> um, so in the process of those 60 days, I acquired a business partner. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that was more of just um, a silent partner, if you will, mm -hmm. more for capital purposes. Gotcha. And um, then obviously we had that manager and the manager, I, w I was very hands off for the most part because I wanted that manager to feel like it was hers and right. really kind of take some ownership into the situation. Which was smart because you still had your other job, right? I was At still the time. working full time, <laughs> yes. yes. And so the typical entrepreneur <laughs> with the side hustle, right? Until the side hustle becomes the main hustle. We've, <laughs> we've all been there as entre entrepreneurs. If I love my it. My plate isn't overflowing. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, but the third day that we were open, um, the business partner and the manager had a disagreement mm. and she walked out. Okay. The manager and, um, losing her also, led to losing, I believe it was six other employees, okay. um, friends or relatives. Right. And so it was like, oh my gosh, now what? <laughs> now it's on you. Now it's on me. Gotcha. Um, and there was a lot of it that I wasn't, I didn't go through the whole process of knowing how the chef did everything in, during the morning mm -hmm. works and, and how things were handled or there was a lot of things I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, by God's grace, there was a, a young man sitting inside Fuel Bar mm -hmm. that had worked there before. And he stepped up to the counter and he goes, hey, I can help you for the next few days. I have to go back to Austin this weekend. And I said, okay. I said, can I fly you here Monday <laughs> for another week? And he goes, yeah. So, I call those earth angels. No, 100%. I mean, like, like, for what him are the, to be, what are, the what are the odds of him sitting there? Yeah. Um, right. And so there were several things that he knew that I didn't, and that really helped. And mm. then, um, you know, for as hard of a 10 days that that was, mm -hmm. that might have been one of my biggest blessings mm -hmm. because it, it made me jump in. Right. I mean, cannonball, like... It was no longer we're going to take a back seat and, like, let this person handle this or do anything else. It is now on me. Um, Which is a good lesson to learn in itself that as a business owner, you should know how everything works from top uh, to yes. bottom and back down again. 100%. Yeah. And fast forward till now. Oh, wait, bottom to top to back. Yeah, yeah, all <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, know, front all back, of it. All of front it. back. Um, and, and now, fast forward, you know, I'm, I don't work there on a daily basis. But if I ever have to go in... I make sure I do the dirty work mm -hmm. and I do it in front of my employees. Mm -hmm. So they know there is nothing that I have not done, will not do that. I, that I would ask of them. I love that. Um, yeah. but so that, that happened. I tried to work at fuel bar for 40 hours a week and also take care of my real job at the time. And, mm -hmm. um, eight weeks in, I said, I can't, yeah. it's not fair to, anybody right um and when i said especially my, you yeah, i mean yeah. you, when you work that much yeah. i mean there is brutal. no quality of life at no. that point you're no. and and you're you're stressed out and mm -hmm. always on the go right so so I've, i'm glad you noticed that because sometimes it takes people years to notice that <laughs> i sat down with my boss and he goes you're leaving this job to open a restaurant like, he was shocked. Really? Like, Do you know what you're doing? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> Guess what? I've nope, already, I don't. <laughs> I've already put, I put too much money into this right. already. And I had, I didn't have much, but what I had was in it. Yeah. So it was, I couldn't see it fail, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, six months later, COVID hits. Oh. And that was also interesting. Um I now, were you at the new location at that point, the one that's right down the yeah, street from yes, us here? Yes, okay, yeah, okay. we were already there. So you'd moved from Wadley. No, 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 I I was there the whole time. The whole time, you never opened up. I never the old was spot. at that gotcha. one. Yeah, I've been okay. on Louisiana the whole time, gotcha. um, and so you know that happens, and I've said this in plenty of public places, but Patrick Payton being our mayor at the time was the best thing that could have happened to us. Um, I remember vividly it's, you know, I'm not going to enforce masks or shutdowns, but like respect your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And, and that was kind of his thing. Like, you know, he's not going to come and punish us. How are we supposed to make a living? Like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't close down one day. No, 
we um, we changed some things. Sure, you ha- and yeah. you had to, right? right? Like we couldn't allow people to eat in store, but people were still coming in to pick up. Um, but I felt like we became accommodating and we became mm-hmm. more invested in our community yeah. from a standpoint of we had some very faithful customers that were older mm-hmm. and they were scared and that is fine. Right? right. Right. So they would, they would call in their order and they would actually order, um, 12 bowls. Oh, and then save them for the week. Freeze them and <gasps> save them for the week. Smart. And, that's um, smart for anybody any now. <laughs> I was like, time management. <laughs> I could have them for the whole week yeah. there at home. They I would, love that. They would back in. They had a forerunner. I mean, I know this these people now. And they'd back in their forerunner, and they'd pop the trunk. I'd set it in there. Um, so no contact. I, no so, contact. Right. And if I, I happened to have extra, like, Clorox wipes or Lysol spray, I sent it with mm. them. Just, you know, yeah. I if, – if it was a situation like that and they were concerned, I'll help you, right? Right. Right. Um, in store, um, we didn't require masks for employees or customers. Um, there's two sides to every situation, right? So right. very few people highly disagreed with my stance on everything. Um, and then you learn about keyboard warriors and how they feel on Facebook. And overall, I think COVID strengthened our business more than I could give it credit for. Right, right. It definitely changed things. And it, and I feel there are some good things that have taken away from it, mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, now, I mean, I don't know if you could order online before. Was that a big thing? You, you could order online, but we but didn't it, deliver. Didn't deliver. So gotcha. delivery changed for right. sure. Um, yeah, delivery. And then just to be more creative in, in different aspects. Absolutely. That, that you didn't really consider before. Well, and as a business owner... I know for you, because I know it felt for us to not have to lay off our team during that time, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you got to keep your employees all employed during this very them, scary. Yeah. I mean, it was very scary. Yeah. Let's be honest. It was yeah. a scary time, yeah. right? Nobody knew what, what was happening day to day. Yeah. And uh, it, it was nice to have a staple and that you got to stay open and yeah. be there for people. Yeah. So, so I love that hard, uh, hard lesson to learn six months into a business. Right? Very hard. But, very um, well. And it goes to the pivoting. Like we always say in business, you have to pivot. Have to. I mean, we had to pivot a hundred. I mean, I mean, 150%. It was like, whoa, there's no oil and gas. I mean, oil's at negative, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> negative. This has never happened. What do you do? You pivot and you find some th- other ways. And I mean, we were selling eggs and milk and, you know, I mean, you do, you do what you have to do to stay open and, but you pivot and you learn. And so as long as you learn from the pivot, then, then yeah, then it's all good. It's all about growth, right? Exactly. I love that. We're going to do something um, called quote of the day. So I'm sitting here in Midland, Texas with Alexis Rice. She is the owner of Fuel Bar and she is also a business development director for Tenera. So a lot of hats we have, we'll get into the oil hat later, but right now we are focusing on fuel bar and we haven't even talked about the second location yet (laughs) so i'm excited about that first we're gonna pick out let me mix these up a little from our last podcast let's see oops there we go okay so let's see what card you get alexis oh Oh, you got the grow card we just talked about growing you got to learn and grow do you want me to read this yes please i never lose i either win or learn Oh man! Bam. Thanks, God. Bam, I know <laughs> Nelson Mandela. One of my favorite <sighs> quotes. What does that mean to you? I I say this to my employees often. I I'm gonna say it was about 20, 2022. We're having a team meeting, and I basically look at them and I said, guys, I don't mean this to be cocky or to be anything other than I don't know how to lose. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? I'm going to figure something out, and it's going to turn into a win. Mm -hmm. So if this isn't working for us here, we need to figure out something that's going to win. This is crazy because I feel like this is my mindset nine times out of ten. I love it. I I don't want to go – I'm not a book reader, Mm -hmm. and I should be. Um, well, you're too busy working. <laughs> <laughs> There's also that. But I want to learn by trial and error. 
and I want to know why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then I want to know the efficiencies or the logistics of something that I can do to make it better to learn from it for it to be a win. Right. Did you always have that mindset? Was it something that was just kind of you were ingrained with growing yeah. up? It was, it was probably, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing here, parent, you know, parents put, did they teach you yeah. that? So I'm an only child. Okay. Um, and my dad's favorite son. <laughs> um, so he was probably a lot harder on me than he would have been, than most men I think would be on a daughter. It, but and your mom's like an amazing athlete. Yeah. You were telling me. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. What did she, she ran all through she college? She ran all through college, and yeah. And yeah, she went to the Olympic trials. Um, yeah, no, my mom was a phenomenal runner. So I love that. It's that never give up yeah. mindset. You just, you do it. And yeah. You keep figuring it out, you know. So. I love it. And that's what we say. We always say everything's figure outable. It is. It is. I mean, there's, you're going to figure out a way. Do you have another favorite quote? I know because this one is, this one truly is one of my favorite quotes. I love this one, live by it. And I, I feel like it just can really change your whole mindset when you think of it this way. And because then you, you have that, you don't have fear of failure because I think fear of failure is so, it's so easy to fall into that trap, right? Yeah. But if you look at it, I'm never going to lose. I'm going to either win or learn. Yeah. What, what do you have to lose? On the flip side of that, like, if you're not failing, you're not trying. That's right. And um, we we tend to look at failure as, oh, it's got the worst little vibe around it, right? You're and right, you're right. And it's not bad. Exactly. It just means that that didn't work and you know not to do it again. Mm -hmm. And there's a hundred other options sitting in front of you that could be the golden ticket. I love that. So, do you, so back to the quote. Do you have a favorite quote of the day that, that you kind of like really embodies your life? Well, I think like I just said, if you're not failing, yeah. you're not trying. Yeah. Um, truthfully, I think when it comes to business, I can't say it's like a quote, but okay. um, I just think that as long as you're doing good, good will come. Yeah. As long as you treat people with respect mm -hmm. um, as long as you put your grocery cart up at the grocery <laughs> store after using it. Like, I think the things that you do when nobody is watching mm -hmm. only will bring better things down the road. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Wipe down the sink, sink in a public restroom oh after you God, use it. I do it every time. Like, like leave it better, leave it better, better than, than you, you found, found it. it. I think that is so true. Yeah. I, I love that. Because um, it's so easy to get so tightened up, up in what we're doing sure. that we, and I've been there, trust me, I am not perfect on this. When I mean, I remember in young days where I was just so focused and, and I wasn't thinking of leaving it better yeah. than I found it. But now as I'm getting older, I'm like, how can I leave this situation better? How can I be a helper instead of a taker? Do and you I, think that you would have had that mindset, though, had you not been a business owner? Because I, I've i always been a question. cart returner. I've good question. I've always been a cart returner. Yes. Like, always. However, the wiping down the sinks and bathrooms or picking up an extra piece of trash on a floor somewhere, like, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't have done it before. Right. But I dang sure do it now because I would want it done for me. Right. As an owner, I, I think there's a correlation. I think, and I think it's also being a mom too. I would say business owner and being being a mom changed my whole perspective on life. Sure. I mean, for, you know, because before when I wasn't a mom, it was more, you know, you're focused on me, 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 me. And then after a mom, and it's the same with the team, right? When you have a business, same thing. When you're, before you own a business, it's me, me, me. And after a business, it's team, 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 customer, sure. customer, customer. Yeah. So I would say it's a combo of mom and business owner for sure. But I love that. That is so yeah. good. Okay, now to the exciting news about your new location. I know. So oh excited! I'm so excited to talk about this because um, when we found out, we were we were over the moon for you because uh, I feel like I feel like every town should have a fuel bar. By the way. My best friend who lives in California said, can you tell her to come open? She, we brought yes. her we brought her to Fuel Bar when she was in town. She said, can she come open one in California? So there you go. If you need to franchise okay. um, after honest. this second yeah. one and you're like, hey, yeah, let's franchise. There you go. You know, I'll be honest. Franchising has been on my radar for a while. Yeah. Um, and what's crazy, people from California, people that have visited Hawaii, they'll come back and they'll say, we could not find anything like this. I don't know what the secret is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that. Um, 
Yeah, because if you could share that recipe for the pearls bowl (laughs) and your acai (laughs) mix, if you could share that right now (laughs) and I could duplicate it, but it still wouldn't taste the same, right? Because have you ever done that? You've made a recipe that you've gotten off the internet. It doesn't taste the same. It's never the same. So yeah, Yeah. just I'll just keep going to Field Bar. I'm not going to make it. (laughs) Um, But you're right. Yours is different because I try them everywhere I go uh, when I'm out of town and mm -hmm. I'm like, "Mm mm-mm. I do too. Not even close to Field Bar. I will try them anytime I travel. I'm going somewhere to try one. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing, here's what, here's what almost aggravates me about this. Okay. Say it's your first time. Mm-hmm. You've never had an acai bowl. Okay. And you go into a store and you're like, oh, that was awful. What are the chances you're going to come to me <laughs> and buy one? Do you know what I mean? It's so a good I don't point. want anybody to suck at making them. That's a great point. Like yeah. I, I need everybody to be good and better right. <laughs> because you want people to try it because it's not... So do you ever tell someone when you're at a bad place, like, hey, if you added this uh, secret ingredient, it would be better? I just, I'll tell you what I love, and I've never had the mindset is, I love to go into those other places and I just look at their efficiencies and like their logistics Mm. on where a cooler is compared to where their blenders and the the milks are and like, how are they portioning out things and what are they using? You're looking at as a business owner. A hundred percent now. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's been kind of a really neat perspective and I will stand there. I won't even order anything and I'll just stand there, especially if it's the open kitchen. And I just, I'll watch because I am so interested to see how, they do it. Right. Um, I, I, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to, I want to dive into your, t- your partnership with Diamondback because you're about to, and has it opened? It's open. It's open. So it's second open. location yes. is open. Um, it is going, how is it going? Tell it us, tell great. us everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's not been a lot of like media and stuff done around it because we really needed to figure some things out because this is so new for everybody involved. Right. Um, so end of 23, Diamondback comes to me and they said, Hey, we're looking at doing like an employee center. Um, we would love to have a fuel bar. Sure. Um, and so we continue to work through everything Mm -hmm. and now that we're open, um, it takes off so much volume of my first store. Mm -hmm. So every morning I have anywhere from five to 10 large orders. Okay. Um, where service companies are taking them to customers. Okay. Uh, and the, the first store can't handle all that volume all the time. Um, we just don't have the room for it. Right. And so having a second location, especially where it is, yeah. has been very convenient. It takes the weight off that store. And then, um, Every day we're selling out of wraps and sandwiches over there because it's the easiest grab and go mm-hmm. for those people in those Faskin Towers. And um, they're so good. Those wraps are so good. You know, we just added, once we added the second store, we added some new items and mm-hmm. that's been really neat to see. So we're known for our smoked chicken salad because mm-hmm. we mesquite smoke the chicken. So it's got a very unique flavor within mm. it. Um, and now we have a spicy version of it. And then we added... Um, a jalapeno bacon ranch wrap. Ooh, that sounds good. And it good. is so good. That sounds great. Um, and we added another one. Oh, a chipotle one. Nice. So it's a chipotle chicken wrap. And the cool part is that came from my chef. He I love said, it. Hey, I think we need to change it up a little bit. Can I add these? Yes. Yes. Yes, let's, you can. Let's give it a shot. Let's yeah. do it. I love that. Um, and I think there's a an ownership factor maybe that he feels in the fact that like I heard, I listened, yeah. let's execute. Um, but no, the second story is going great. Good. Um, just, it's been interesting. And is it open to everyone or it is. is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so it's good. open I'm glad, to everyone. I'm glad we mentioned that because I wasn't sure. I didn't everybody. know if it was just for Diamondback employees, mm-hmm. if it was open to the public and where's the location of the new location. So uh, 550 West Texas and okay. then it's Tower 2. Okay. Um, Sweet 100. So you just walk in and we're just kind of right there on the left when you walk in. Awesome. And it's, yeah, it's open to everybody because there's a lot of other people in those buildings. Right. Um, We'll have Conigo people walk over or um, what we haven't really advertised is kind of outside the building because Mm -hmm. so many Midland High kids, you know, walk up and down Big Spring to hit Domino's, Fuel Bar, Subway, right, right in that area. So it would be closer for some of those that walked to the other Fuel Bar already. Right. 
Um, but no, it's been really neat. Um, and I'm so honored and blessed that Diamondback thought of me in that. Oh, I love that. And uh, they rolled out, or they did their um, pre, I don't want to call it pre-season party, uh-huh. but they're rolling baristas, which is oh. their partnership with MISD Special Needs. Um, started or happened yesterday. Fantastic. And so starting next Wednesday and Thursday of every week, they'll have MISD kids come over and Fuel Bar will be providing the breakfast for it. And then, so there's a black rifle next door to that Fuel Bar uh-huh. and they'll be providing the coffee. And then um, these students will have a cart and they'll go to every floor and they it. work on eye contact and communicating oh. and just little things that you need for the workforce just yes. to kind of get them prepared. That's so, beautiful. I love it. Yeah, I'm really hoping that maybe once the semester finishes that um, we can hire a few of them and that way they're in a familiar place as well. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yeah. This really is amazing. Yeah. And I'm so excited for you and to, and to just know also, I know it must feel good as a business owner that 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 there is that many customers that will support a second location. Cause I think that you always wonder, right? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, if I open up, will they come? You know, mm-hmm. if, they, and, and if you've seen field of dreams, you know, if you build it, they will mm-hmm. come. <laughs> and yeah, so, I had, I had reservations too, because it's what, like six blocks away. Right. You know what right. I mean? It's not far. Um, right. It's like, not like you put one in North Midland, one in South Midland or yeah, right. but I, which I think one in record, North Midland would Northwest <laughs> Midland is on my radar. It's been on my radar. I think it would be supported. Yeah. I'm just saying, just yeah. throwing it out there's there. There's a, there's a whole other demographic, if you will, that, I mean, how many people that don't need to go downtown aren't going to go downtown? Right. Well, I look at it. I mean, I've lived here 25 years. I've spent more time here downtown the past two years because my business is here, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I'm downtown all the time, where yeah. before I, w- I was only yeah. coming to Fuel Bar. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah. So I, I love, you know, you're right. So I think you're, you, you are 100% correct. There's a whole bit, you know, a whole customer base mm-hmm. that will come, you know, if you build in North Midland. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll put it out there. Yeah. See what happens. Well, congratulations. Thank so you. exciting. Um, I want to ask you uh, just a couple business questions sure. because I think we all learn from sharing. And so if you, you know, could share one thing today with someone that is either A, thinking about opening a business, B, they're in it, but they're in that space where they're just not sure what's happening because we've all been there, right? We're like, what do I do next? <laughs> you know, maybe this isn't working the way I thought it would. What advice would you give to them? I think when it comes to the business itself, um, a purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what's your purpose? Mm-hmm. And but within that, and I've told my employees from day one, where we are in Midland you are so used to having you walk into a restaurant and half of it's closed down and it's because they don't have the staff to Mm -hmm. service it right Mm -hmm. you provide good customer service and an average product they're coming back you provide good customer service and a higher than average product you're winning yeah um i think if you have to be customer service focused, yes, whatever that looks like. Um, as far as it being you as an owner, uh, I think you have to realize what you're capable of. Not everybody handles stress the same. Mm-hmm. Not everybody kind of has that grit to grind. Um, I'll be honest, my threshold of stress um, five years ago compared to now has completely changed. Really? I think now I look at issues, concerns, whether it's from my point of view, an employee or a customer. Right. What's the, what's the real root, root cause here? And does it really matter? Mm-hmm. Do we really need to get onto somebody for X, Y, and Z or to say, hey, next time, let's make sure this... And tell them your why. Right. If they don't know why you want something done that way, 
they're not going to listen. Right. They're just thinking you're just being mean yeah, and this is yeah. the way. But they're you like, have a reason. Yeah, hey, share it. I, okay. This, That's like, good advice. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the other day, I, there was a picture of a acai bowl posted online. And I said, y'all, this picture, I said, I hope he's had this out in the sun for 10 minutes because it looks like soup. <laughs> you know? And right. it's like, but the reason why we need to make it the right way and mm-hmm. make sure we're handing out quality products you don't know who's going to go take a picture and post it. Right. And they might have a million followers and they're going to say, ugh. Like, right. There's, there's more than it just right. being, that, that's not how you make it. Like the why, this got shared and y'all know that's not the quality that I would approve of. Right. Um, but you explained why. But you explain why. Yeah. Every time. I think that's important. Especially, especially, because you know your why, right? And sometimes we don't always express it to our team why it's so important. Like I have a fun, no, not a fun. <laughs> Let me take that back. It's so not fun. It's a pet peeve. I, I have a fun pet, pet peeve. peeve. <laughs> I, and this I have found is the other business owner's pet peeve. I like music playing when you walk when yeah. when you walk into our store. And if I walk into the store, like it's the it's the only thing I really am like I, that I care a lot about when it comes to the you know just like the atmosphere sure. of the store. I'm like I like music playing, and if I walk in and there's no music playing, so I explained one day why I like it. And so I'm like, okay, imagine this. You walk into a store, and there's silence, Mm -hmm. and nobody, you know, and you're a customer, and you're just standing there looking around. But if there's music on, and it's a song you like, and it's Don't Stop Believing," the customer's going to start singing, (laughs) Don't Stop, right? And they don't mind if they're waiting two minutes for the, for the next, you know, team member to help them. So I know it's, so again, it's not a fun pet peeve, but it is, it is that one thing. But I, once I explained why, then our team was like, oh, we understand why you like music now. Because yeah, I walked, then they'll tell me their stories. Oh yeah, I walked in the store the other day and there was no music on and there was no good vibe. They notice it, right? Right. And then that completely changes yeah, yeah, your whole point of it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, and I'll tell you so, one other thing that yeah. I that I've learned is to stop apologizing mm. as uh, for fuel bar girls, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you might have waited a long time, but I'm not going to say sorry for waiting. I'm going to say thank you for thank your you. patience. Mm. I'm going to I'm going to shift the mindset to like praise you for being patient mm-hmm. instead of like pointing out our flaw. That is great. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like, absolutely. Hey, thank you so much for being patient. Here's your order. Have a great day. I love that. I love that. That's key right there. Huge. That is good. So if, you have, if, you're, <laughs> if you're a business owner, take note right there. <laughs> no, because it does. It, it shifts it around. 100%. Totally. 100%. I love it. Okay, we do something, Alexis, called question okay. of the day. Oh. Okay, and so very similar to quote of the day, but now we're going to mix these up. Pick one out and answer it. We're sitting here in Midland, Texas with Alexis Rice. She's the owner of Fuel Bar. We're talking all things. We're going to talk some fun facts here in a minute. But first, you got the strong card. Yes. These why this is <laughs> it's I know it, it, people think that I put them in there like on purpose, but it's just randomly selected, right? I did They're, not they, put that on top. This is me. Okay. <laughs> um, how do you motivate yourself daily? Ooh, good question. How do you motivate yourself daily? Um, I never lose. <laughs> I either, it goes back to your quote of the win. day. <laughs> um, how do you not? How do you not have goals or? things you want to achieve and accomplish. Um, And it can be anything. It can be the smallest of things that you want to get done, or it can Mm -hmm. be a goal that might take you 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that I'm optimistic nine times out of 10 with a little bit of reality in that. Mm -hmm. But there's not much that I don't think I can do or accomplish. Um, and I think because that's been just ingrained in me for Mm -hmm. my whole life and that's just who I am as a person, right? I can't tell you that I need motivation daily. Right. Because yeah, because you're, you're, you're self motivated. We're doing it. We're going, you get up, you get up and go from day like or from minute one, right? You're not sitting around going, Oh, I'm going to wait till for this coffee to kick in for an hour and then I might get up. (laughs) Right. It's just like you get going. I love that. 
you just have that ingrained self-motivation yeah. that gets you going every day. I love it. I love it. Well, and I share that nine out of 10 optimism with you. I, you know, and, and the 1% is the real, the realist, yeah. right? Cause you go, okay, yeah, some bad stuff is going to happen, sure. but nine yeah, out of 10 but times, rolling with the punches, it's going to work I think out. Is like, also as a business owner, right? Like yes. you don't know what's going to happen when you walk <laughs> through that door. Somebody's sick. Somebody's kids are sick, flat tire. You don't know. And if you can't adapt and just continue to be positive yes. and roll with it, you're setting yourself up for failure. Well, and I think your key word was adapt there. Yeah, because you have to as a business owner. We call it our day getting hijacked. We'll be like, okay, day just got hijacked. I yeah. thought I was going this way. Yeah. I'm yeah. going this way. But you, but it teaches you that flexibility. You know, uh, it happened to us this morning, right, sweetie? It happened to us this morning. We're like, okay, a tire went flat tire. You know, it's like, it okay, happens. we're yeah. gonna, we're just gonna shoot and and be flexible and go with the day. Air condition goes out. What do you do? Well, you go get it fixed, you know, but you don't let it get you down. You no. don't let it stop you from your goals. You don't let it stop you from whatever it is you still have to get done that day. I love that. Um, fun fact about you that we would not know by reading your bio. Oh, my goodness. Fun <laughs> fact about me. Um, hmm. <laughs> This is a very good question. I feel like I'm such an open book. That I don't know how many. I don't know how many facts are really fun. Do you have any hole in ones? Um, You're a golfer. Do you have no, any? No, I have no hole in ones. I don't either. Okay, I have, We're gonna get one. This is our year, Alexis. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. We're getting our hole in one this year. Okay. In 2012, I set out to my. my this is Alexis in college. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love how you preface that. <laughs> Just my, for the record, this is Alexis in college. <laughs> let's not judge her. She's grown. <laughs> um, I set a goal, whatever you want to call it, um, a New Year's resolution uh -huh. to go to as many concerts as I could. Oh, fun. And I mean, I'm talking like just any live situation. And right. I did go to some big ones that year and whatnot. Um, but I went to over 260 concerts that year. That is a fun fact. Oh my good. 200 and how many? It was like 264. Okay. I know. I had too much time at Blue Light in Lubbock. <laughs> <laughs> right now my girls are going to be like, okay, I've been to like three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think how many I've been to in my life. That is so cool. It was crazy. What was your favorite one out of all of them? You know, that's back when so many like Texas country guys were kind of in the beginning of their, um, not as big as they are now. Right. So right, it was right. nothing for them to play Tuesday night at blue light. Right. Um, and forget about that eight o'clock class the next day. <laughs> what but, eight o'clock class? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was back. Oh, gosh, that's going to be so hard to say because you had, uh, Jonathan Tyler and the Northern lights were really big. Then, um, Josh Weathers, that was kind of before he took his little hiatus. Okay. Um, but th just, there are a lot of smaller guys yeah. that were staples in, in Lubbock, uh, anybody that's my age mm -hmm. in your, in your college career of music. So yeah, that, heard yeah, I was like, I don't know who they are, but I'm sure they're great. I'm sure they were great. You're also a Tiger Woods fan. I'm a huge Tiger Woods fan. That is really? true. Oh, that is a fun fact. My first, Did not know that. My first chapter book in my life. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, like, how did you? Did you see him one time? What my was it? dad. My dad was a big golf fan. Um, like when my grandmother would watch me when I was younger. Uh, like Davis Love the Third was big at the time, and we always had the TV on golf. And yeah, yes. no, my dad was a big Tiger fan. Um, and I'm going to add on to this since you brought up an athlete. So when I was good in elementary school, um, every other Friday I would get to go to Walmart. And do you remember how they used to have posters like in the little plastic deals? Yes. And, okay. and you would flip through yeah, yeah, yeah. and find your favorite yeah. and just, and you, and yeah. you have to be like, okay, a 13. Yes. You have to look in the little box. Um, if I was good, like if I didn't have any like red dots or whatever on my report card for the week, <laughs> I would get to go to Walmart and pick out a poster, and I had every Michael Jordan poster ever Oh, my made. gosh. I love like, that. My my bed was Barbie pink, but my walls were Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you were an athlete through and through. 
<laughs> I mean, when people had, well, well I was going to age myself in sync on their walls. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, sure. you know, but you had Michael Jordan. I love yeah. it. That is so cool. So have you ever met Tiger Woods? I have seen him play. Okay. Um, th- I've seen him play twice. And then I went to uh, Hero World Challenge, his tournament in the Bahamas nice. a couple years ago. And um, he pa- he was like this far from me as he passed by in his golf cart. And I just, you're just shocked. You just... Did you do what our family did? We started taking selfies. Like, oh, like I was it's me and Tiger. Like I saw him coming from a distance. So I like, held my phone up and it's like him and Charlie passed me. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to see him. Yes. I'm, I'm sure. I, I think someday you'll maybe get to play. You know, you never know. I you hope never so. know. Maybe in a pro am or something. I hope that so. would be fun. That would be so amazing. on that note, favorite golf course and lowest score. Favorite golf course. That's a hard one. Um, You know, I've I've gotten to play some really cool courses, and um, I think one of my favorites uh, for Father's Day in I think it was 2018, I took my dad to the Players. Oh, that's fun! So we got to go to Sawgrass, and uh, then we got to play the Wednesday after. Oh, that's cool! So the grandstands were still up. Mm. Um, and that was really neat. You know what I mean? Because right. I've played. It's a great Father's Day trip. Yeah. I've yeah. played like um, TPC, like the stadium course where they do waste management uh, without the stands. So that's, mm. and that's still neat. But to get to play it and with the stands still up and right. that was really cool. I bet. Um, but I'll be honest, if, you, if you're looking for a fun place to play close to here, mm-hmm. you can't beat Lajitas. Oh, I could not agree more. Love Lajitas. Yeah. Love, love, love it. And when you leave Lajitas, you just feel like your soul has been refreshed. Mm-hmm. You just, I mean, you're, you're in God's country. I yeah. mean, you are just surrounded by those mountains. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yes. Could not agree more. One of our favorites. Thank you, yes, thank you, Steve <laughs> Smith. Uh, he was a good friend of ours who, who really made it what it was back in 2001. Yeah, 2000. Bought he bought it in 98, 2001. Mm-hmm. And, then, um, and then now, you know, other people ha- are you know, have taken it and to what it is today, but talk about a beautiful course. Just in the middle of nowhere. I know. So peaceful. So gorgeous. So I'm glad, I'm so glad you brought up Lajitas. Okay. Favorite restaurant? Fuel bar. Duh. (laughs) (laughs) So when I ask that question to most of our guests, I can't tell you how many times fuel bar comes up. Really? It comes up a lot. Yes. Fuel bar. You know, I, like I said, okay, besides fuel bar, besides Chick-fil-A and fuel bar, um, (laughs) If we're going somewhere local, mm-hmm. you know, it's crazy how much I started supporting small businesses after COVID, right? Well, and after you've become a and business owner. Become a business owner, yeah, changes everything. Absolutely, it does. Um, you know, if I'm downtown, I love to go to Cancun. Mm-hmm. Jalapenos and queso is my jam. Nice. I love Wall Street salad. That's our favorite. We love Wall Street salad. And what's crazy yes. is I don't even like blue cheese, but on that salad devour same I do, uh, I never eat blue cheese outside of Wall Street yeah yeah same um, <laughs> that's so funny no, I feel like I have and so the bread. many and it's the for bread different so reasons good. right right like oh the bread the bread I, I love Ray's yes um, oh I can't I, I don't, know don't it's hard like okay well then I was gonna ask you favorite coffee shop so favorite coffee shop well, besides field bar because you guys do have coffee we do have coffee but <laughs> I will say we in the last year, we've transitioned. We got rid of our espresso machine. Yeah. There's a coffee shop on every corner in this place. Um, and so it was just kind of like, why? That's right. not my specialty. I'm going to let people Stay that are my really lane. good at that gotcha. handle it. Um, well, I feel like, and it's not, not true, but Black Rifle, they're obviously my neighbor at the new location. Yes. Um, and I adore the guys that own it. So, But I also love Far West. So those are my two. Okay, perfect. Okay, favorite life hack? Something that makes your life easier? I'll tell you. I just (laughs) learned this in the last year. Oh, good. I can't wait to hear it. Delegate. (laughs) Delegate. That's a good one. Delegate. You know what I mean? Like, if you... And it's hard. It's hard if you're a... Control. If you're used to being in control. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, I I still cannot delegate the remote control at home. I'm sorry, but... I need to work oh, on that. No, nobody said you had to do that. One. <laughs> but, but delegating is that is a good life hack. But when it's, what when made it's, you learn it? What like where did you go? Okay, this is it. Plate got too full. Okay. Um, and it sounds silly, but I hired 
a wonderful lady to kind of be a personal assistant because between basically three jobs, like there are things that I don't have time for. Right. Um, and even within my employees. So at cafe, um, fuel bar cafe, there used to be cafe Capana around the corner. Okay. And one of the ladies that worked there, um, I have her now. And two weeks ago, a light bulb went off and I said, you are not using her to her full potential. Let's figure something out. Gotcha. So now the top items that she continues to get asked about, like bringing over to fuel bar, mm -hmm. she makes. How great is that? And I said, hey, this is now, this is your, now your baby. Yeah. Like whatever you need, order it, take care of it. You've I love got it. this. And so it. it's just what I, when my plate is lighter, I am, um, I can jump on things quicker when mm -hmm. needed, right? It's right. not like I just feel like I'm overwhelmed all the time. Right. And Because that's not a good feeling. It's not. It's not. And, and we've, and everyone's been there, right? And you know how you feel. Yeah. When, and it's not, it's not worth it. No. Yeah. And you're not always the best wife or <laughs> friend or boss. Or daughter. Or, or daughter. Or, yeah, right. Whatever yeah. it is, right? Yeah. And no, so just you. delegating things out that other people can do that aren't just critical. Yeah let it go that's good i like it all right favorite um did we let's see we did restaurant favorite movie oh. okay this is gonna be this this should be my fun fact that's embarrassing <laughs> um i'm not a movie person <laughs> like if you say whatever like all the iconic movies that you're supposed to have seen in your life i've seen none. top gun Okay, I've seen Top Gun. Okay, good. Whew. And the I was gonna one. say you have got to watch Top Gun today, <laughs> Alexis. <laughs> but okay, beyond that, um, you're thinking like Casablanca, or yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, don't, think don't I've seen that. Casablanca. Um, I, but for some reason, I like really good, light-hearted mm. things that make you feel good. Right. You know what I mean? I'll tell you. I do too. Let's, I don't like scary. I don't no. want to be. I don't. I don't. I, d I just don't want to be jumped at and scared. No. I just, I'm Do sorry. Do you like Ted Lasso? I, I love Ted Lasso. Okay, I watch Ted Lasso. I could watch it over every, and over. I, I'm on yeah. like my fifth time and I watch love an that. episode before I go to bed every night because there's something about it that you can't watch Ted Lasso and be in a bad mood right. after that. It's kind of like Friends. Yes. I don't know if you've seen yeah. Friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. It's like, wait, did I age myself? <laughs> I can watch Friends every night and I do. Uh, so it's like, what do I watch before I go to bed? Yeah. There's something about it. You just will laugh. You'll yeah. feel good. But Ted Lasso is the best show. I feel like everyone needs to watch it. I agree. Um, I mean, talk about positivity and, and just focusing on the right stuff and, and, and the mental health aspect. Yo, my, isn't that crazy? So important. So important. So many good little lessons that you don't mm -hmm. realize that you're picking up while you're watching. Yes. And when you watch it the second or third time, third time you, you did, pick up. Yep. I love that. Favorite song. What's your hype song? You're, wa you're walking in, you've got, you've got and your Air AirPods are on. What's your hype song? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you I have two. Okay, good. Okay. My <laughs> first one. These are not appropriate questions. Yes. Um, <laughs> I do not ask inappropriate questions. Um, okay. <laughs> hype song. Hype song getting rowdy i i love like old school rap mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna say anything from like like early little wayne days okay probably probably up there okay and then i my number one requested song on a late night in an uber mm -hmm. is <laughs> yeah. i love how you preface that <laughs> a late night because in an Uber. Because it's honestly maybe like still a hype song for me. Um, uh -huh. Is s some Celine Dion. Oh, I love Celine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My heart will go on. <laughs> There's that one. There's that, that one. Cry. Yes. But, um, yeah. I, I don't know why. I love that. I love that you love Celine. Yeah. I'm, and I'm going to age myself. I, see, I love female artists. Yes. Like I'm just like all about supporting females and yes. everything. But... I love Mariah Carey. I love Carrie it. Underwood. Some old Mariah. Give me some old yes. Whitney. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Celine. Yes. I mean, yes. I will sing at the top of my lungs like I am yeah. on stage with a microphone and people should be listening, but they really shouldn't they be. They should not be listening. Should not. <laughs> should not be listening. I love that. Okay, that's fun. Okay, favorite memory in Midland. And we're I know we're running out of time because I know you've got you're a busy girl. Yes. You got places to go, but I would love favorite to know your favorite memory, memory in, in Midland. Midland. I'll tell you, every year, 
Um, I well, that it's been around. I do. It used to be called. Um, it was a uh, Tim Tebow Foundation um, Night to Shine. Yes, yes. Um, and so every year, going to prom with a special needs is mm. at Stonegate is my. It's my favorite. It's thing. so much fun. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I've I've actually joy, been, I've been there the before. Joy, and, the innocent joy that yes. they have is beautiful yes so that's, it, that's my favorite it is a beautiful it is a beautiful night in midland texas uh, when that when that night happens every time yes. i love that yes. that's uh, that is awesome great memory great memory okay we are running out of time we haven't even really talked to oil and gas um so really quick yeah. what is the state of oil and gas right now what are you seeing out there what do you love about your job what an interesting year for mergers and acquisitions right mm -hmm. um and obviously there's People that might think, oh, well, you know, this company's just doubling in size. Well, they can't, right? Right. So you have a company that was 13 rigs plus 13. That doesn't make 26. Right. Um, so it's an interesting situation. People are just becoming better and more efficient. Mm. Um, Do you think that was also through COVID? You know, technology, Cause, possibly. Because I've heard um, that from a lot of people. Like through And COVID could have. It could have slowed us down enough to look at efficiencies or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but from my standpoint, um, I, I am excited at where it is. Do you know good, what I mean? Good. I good. think it's in a really good, it's in a good place. Good. Um, anytime it's between, we'll call it 75 and 85. It's a good place for not only the operator, but for the service industry. Um, sometimes we do tend to get a little greedy on both sides and want it to be higher for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as personally that I'm concerned, and also this this also easily translates back to Fuel Bar and mm -hmm. my success there on what oil and gas does too. You're right. Just, you're directly affected. Right. Because well. everybody, you know, people always ask, are you in the oil and gas business? Well, everybody is. Everybody is. Everyone is. Yes. Um, so, yeah, no, I, like I said, you mentioned earlier, so I'm business development for Tenaris. Yes. Um, they hired me back in June of 23, mm -hmm. and it has been it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. I've never been a large corporation girl. Mm -hmm. um, we have 29,000 people worldwide. Wow, that's is a lot. Crazy. 29,000. That is a big number. So um, it's been really, really good, and I've enjoyed it a lot. Awesome. What are you looking forward to the most in the future? I, easy to say opportunities at hand, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, what's next and where are we going to take it? Mm -hmm. Whether that is with Tenaris and, you know, if I can supply somebody with their OCTG, that's wonderful. Um, if that opportunity looks like somebody wants to put a fuel bar in mm -hmm. Northwest Midland, call me. <laughs> or in California. <laughs> or in California. Yeah, we're, we're not limited. I, that's a write-off. Or right? anywhere. Like, Missouri. Yeah. Pick, a, pick yeah. a state. Florida. <laughs> but pick some states you want to go to travel that's true. to. That's true. Um, that's what I'm excited for is right. opportunity. I and I that. think that um, you just have to have the mentality that almost everything is an opportunity. You just Absolutely. have to go with it or not. Yeah. I love that. Um, in closing, is there anything we didn't ask you or talk about today that you're like, hey, this is an important part of my story that I just want to share with, uh, you know, with our friends that are listening and watching? You know, not really. I, th I really appreciate your time and having me. Um, this has been so much fun. I appreciate yours. This has been so much fun getting to know you better because I, you know, I usually see you high by as I'm picking up my Pearls Bowl or, you know, and now I haven't seen, you know. Well, okay, here's here's my fun fact. My, okay. middle, my middle name is Pearl. Oh, I love it. You're kidding me. Did mm -hmm. not know that. It's a family name. So and is that how you came up with Pearls Bowl? Most of my, well, yeah. So okay. Pearls is peanut butter. So we wanted like the alliteration, if you will. Um, and then Annie's is almond butter. So AAPP. And we had to have I like a P it. name and somebody was like, why don't you just use Pearl? And I was like, Ugh. but I'm so glad you did yeah. that. I love that. So and is it a family my, name? It's a family name. And most of my friends, that's what I'm called by. You're kidding. They call you Pearl. Yeah. Oh, that is so cute. Okay. Can I call you Pearl? You can call okay. me Pearl. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited. Officially now. So Officially I've been on your now. Podcast. <laughs> That is great. I love that. Well, and that's most of our family's favorite. When we walk in, we oh, I know. all get a Pearl's Bowl One with of you double, gets peanut double peanut butter. butter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Al and I. We do double peanut butter. Yeah. One of the girls gets extra honey and no nib. Yes, I was like, just going to say there's a no nib in there. Yeah. 
And I'm all about the nibs. I'm yeah. like, give me the nibs. I want the chocolate. The crunch. <laughs> give it to me. Yeah. Yes, I love the chocolate crunch. Um, I have loved this time getting to know you better. This has been awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, let's give out your socials where people can follow. And so we can uh, make sure that everyone knows yes. where the new location is yes, too. Yes, yes, yes. So um, the Fuel Bar Midland is our handle, uh, actually underscore Fuel Bar. Um, on Instagram and then we're obviously on Facebook. Um, but we would love for you to stop by and you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do something I've never done before. What's that? If you mention (gasps) that you watched this podcast. Yes. I will give you 15% off (gasps) your your order. Thank you. That is that? so cool. I love it. I love it. That's a great idea. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you for doing that. So yeah, just go in there and get a pearls bowl and say, Alexis and Krista sent me. Yeah. That's it. That's, That's it. <laughs> they sent me. They, I saw it on the podcast. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. How fun. I've enjoyed this so much. And um, I just want to say I will be watching as a fan and, and wishing you much success because I love seeing women you know, go for it and, and get their goals and, and conquer the world. So go out there Thank and you. conquer the world. You're doing it already. I'm Thank so you. proud of you. I really am. This has been so much fun. So don't forget, go and follow the fuel bar right now, Midland and support this local business because you'll be happy you did. And it'll become your new favorite thing. Just like it is ours. <laughs> so thank you, Alexis. Thank I mean, you. Pearl. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Pearl. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you again yes, real soon. You. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you again real soon. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to dream big, believe. Oh, wait, I can't close out yet. Got to thank our sponsors. Uh, big thank you to Rig ID, to Kevin Foreman, Foreman Financial, Tapestry Hotel Midland. God bless you. Um, also, a big thank you to ThinFR, JoinCapClub.com, and Omni Midland Hotel. Thank you. And I just want to thank all of our, our listeners and viewers today because we love doing what we do. I love that you get to know Alexis Pearl more than you knew before. And I love that you are supporting locals. So now we can say it. Don't forget to dream big, believe, and never give up. You make it a great day.